Hello and welcome back to Dukas Copy TV. Now, if I was to ask you whether you believed in truth, honour and love, I'm sure most of you would probably say yes. But if I was to ask you the same question and whether you trade it in for economic benefit, would the answer still be the same? Well, someone in the studio here to help answer those qu that question is Professor Rainer Gibson, who is the uh, Director of Geneva Finance Institute and also a professor at the University of Geneva. Rainer, welcome to the studio. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Rainer, I, let's just first start by looking at what exactly are you researching at this moment? Well, we're looking at um, where we say always in economics and in finance that people make decisions out of self-interest and mostly to maximize their own monetary benefits. And we ask a simple question, how does ethic fit into the picture? In particular, if I gave you sort of a task to do and I told you you could increase your salary or your bonus at the end if you used uh, cheating or lying to uh, perform that task, would you be willing to do that? And economics says, of course, you should then cheat or lie because then it maximizes your benefits. So, we, so we're looking here, we're, folk, we're looking at the psychology behind financial decisions essentially. Exactly. We basically uh, took 260 students at the University of Zurich, some were from economics, some from psychology. We asked them to be in the role of a CEO who could at the end of the quarter choose to manage the earnings. That's what a lot of CEOs are doing. If he manages the earnings, the earnings per share which is announced is higher and he gets a higher bonus. If he chooses to tell the truth, that means to announce a 31 cent uh, earnings per share, then of course his bonus is lower and he has uh, an opportunity cost. So the decision is simple. We ask those students, what would you do? Would you choose the higher earnings per share announcement that means managing the earnings and thus getting a higher bonus or would you choose to be uh, in harmony with your values? So um, Rainer, just looking at this graph yes. here, talk us through it a little bit. Yes, so what we find is that the blue line mm -hmm which uh, starts at almost 85% refers to the people with less protected value. So let's call them the cheaters. So you see that when you vary the cost in the end, when they have to bear 120 cents cost, only about 10% of them still tell the truth. On the pink axis, you see the people with high ethical mm -hmm. standards. And they see, you see that when there's no cost, almost 100% tell the truth. Mm -hmm. And when there's a very high cost, you still have 60% of these people who are willing to tell the truth. So it means it's difficult to corrupt them. They're very much sticking to their values. And what we find is that these people are less influenced by monetary benefits and also less influenced by what we call market pressure. How can we be sure though that they're not just saying, well, you know, they're just saying, well, I probably would do that. And, and so if, if facing a financial uh, uh, dilemma like that, surely it's easy to just say, well, and say the good thing. Well, we've done, we've re we had this criticism and we repeated these uh, experiments by increasing the stakes. So we pay them much more if they lie. Okay. And still we find that these results are robust. So we see there's been a big debate on corporate governance, especially after the subprime crisis in the financial services industry. And we believe that one thing one might do at the top of a company, whether it's at the level of board of directors or hiring CEOs or CFOs, you have to concentrate also on moral values. So if you choose people and actually we have ways to, the same way you can compute a person's IQ, you can compute his moral uh, intelligence if you want. So you should hire those people because they will promote integrity across the financial institution. The same way you can hire more integrity-driven traders so that they don't cheat like it happened in some of the banks. So that's the first thing. So the second useful application is about remuneration because we always talk we need to incentivize people by paying them more. So we pay them 10 million, we pay them 20 million at the top of a company. Well, what we're saying is that these high integrity CEOs they're not driven by money primarily. So they could work for much less variable bonuses, much less high variable bonuses, and still perform a very good job. And this whole debate about remuneration could be sort of eased down because these people don't respond so much to financial incentives. Um, well, some, f some fascinating thoughts there. I hope uh, the, remaining of the, res the remaining research goes well for you, Rainer, but thanks for coming into the studio. 
Um, that's all we've got time for here on Duca's Copy TV. Uh, join us next week, though. We'll continue to bring you interviews and updates. But until then, have a great weekend. Thank <laughs> you.